Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Night Lancer by Adversity Games. Night Lancer is a one to four player game where you can play as a cooperative or a competitive game as well as a solo mode. In the game, it's for ages 14 and up and takes about two hours plus to play the game. It is basically a worker placement with an added benefit of you know, going on missions and a little bit of luck dice rolling aspects. You're going to be choosing a character in the game. There's eight to choose from and they all have different abilities abilities and whatnot as well as different stats and you're going to try and keep all of their stats and whatnot uh, increasing throughout the game as well as keeping certain other points uh, increasing as well. Uh, at the beginning of the game you're going to be simply choosing different locations and choosing to acquire different pieces of things and whatnot. You can go ahead and go to the black market, you can hire contacts and you can of course gain opportunities to play. Opportunities are going to gain you prospects which are basically points throughout the game you're going to be using and then after that you're going to then go on to missions. There's low profile missions like this one here and there's high profile missions the harder ones are high the lower ones are easier and you're going to simply go through this mission track there's two different choices you can choose and it, as you go through you're going to have to suffer some casualties as if you don't pass them but if you do you're going to get a reward you can choose to go on it by yourself with a partner or fighting against a player uh, going through the missions and only one will survive in that aspect but the idea is to stay alive as long as possible do not get shaken or fall down and pass out as well as to gain as much prospects as possible. At the end of the game, you're going to score a ton of bonus points, and whoever has the most prospects is the winner, provided they still have something called um, this this stuff right here, this uh, ideals here. Losing ideals is very bad, and you want to make sure you at least have one at the end of the game. But all right, enough talking about it. Let me go and show you what's in it and how to play. So here we have the game Night Lancer, and as you can see, it comes with the rule book here, a very large rule book, in fact, and of course the box. You're also going to be getting all the contents you see here. All of these are different characters. They come with their own pieces, as well as the character boards here. There's eight different types, and they all have their own unique color, as well as their own unique class. This one over here, you've got the sniper, and you've got the engineer, and the guard, and the assassin, the cybercracker, and so on and so forth. You're going to also get a deck of cards for the rounds. The beginning rounds are the early ones, and the later ones are called the late rounds. You'll be putting them over here. You got the turn order and all the stuff on the board here you're gonna be using. This is a victory points tracker over here. And then you have the black market. And then of course, this is basically the worker placement area. We'll be putting different pieces down. If ever you get shaken or you have to lay low because you got cracked in the head, you're gonna be putting your guys over here. You got decks of cards here. The first one is opportunity. And this is what's gonna gain you the most amount of prospects throughout the game. But it's gonna cost you and you need to gain money. And how do you gain money? Well, you're gonna go on missions, these low profile and high profile missions. You have um, these ones here, which are gonna be in stages as well as it'll tell you the different stages and you can choose first or second crew which I'll explain later and then of course as you choose between the two different green areas as long as you succeed you move on and if you don't you go to the red and as you pass through here you're going to make payment payment will be based on how many people are in the crew as well as what you're going to get and whether you're going to suffer any heat or not the same is said for the high profile ones as well you're also going to get contact cards and these things are basically helpers that will help you throughout the mission they have a ton of different abilities and uh, things you can use them for whether it be during the street phase which is where you're buying stuff in the uh, worker placement aspect or whether it's for the mission phase. You're also going to be using black market cards for your black market, and depending on the number of players, which it tells you here, there's th uh, two players, uh, three players, and four players here. You're going to be adding these cards down and adding it for the worker placement aspect of the game, and this will increase your stats of your character or allow you to gain certain benefits or as well as gaining uh, health and uh, other, other different stats as well. These are all the token markers in the game you're going to be getting, which you'll be using throughout. You're going to have health, uh, which are these, and you have resolve. You're going to be able to buy loans, which of course you have to pay back from the mafioso, and if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. These things over here are your currency, KC, and you're going to get fives and tens and ones, and of course you're going to have deal cards, which are also really interesting as well. We'll explain in a second. But that's the most, uh, most, most part what you're going to be getting. You'll be getting some of these summary cards as well as each character is going to have two unique abilities here that they can add to their card but let me go ahead and tell you how a turn works above and then we'll come back below and we'll show you a couple rounds so I'm going to go ahead and give you a basic summary of how the turns are going to work and how you're going to do it. You're first going to set up the game, and that's by giving everybody stuff that they need. I'll explain that down below, though. But we'll just talk about the Night Lancer turn summary, and luckily we have this game round card, which is very nice. The first thing that happens is the prep phase, and that's going to be downtime. Downtime is where everybody is going to receive one of each different type of currency. It's going to be based on the characters here. There's going to be health, resolve, and, of course, the uh, chips, or KC. You're going to get one of each of those. You're also going to pay off loans. It's going to cost 
costs you one uh, coin per loan you have every round, and you also have the option to pay 10 if you want to remove the loan. Uh, loans are going to be giving you 10 coins if you choose to use it during the worker placement step. You're also going to draw two contact cards, which you can use during the mission or whenever it specifically tells you how to do so. The next thing you're going to be doing is the event step, and that's pretty easy. You draw an event card from the event deck. It'll either be early or it'll be a late round card. It'll tell you based on the players what types of missions you need to put down, which in this case it'll be two of the low and one of the high. And then of course it'll determine whether or not you as a player have to fight this. Sometimes it'll be based on your heat or based on um, how well you're doing the game for prospects, whatever. It'll have some specific requirement. In this case though, it doesn't have any specific requirement. You would just choose to do it. And if you don't do it, you could choose to lay low instead, but you can't go on a mission if you lay low. low laying low is basically gonna give, give you all your, uh, basically gonna give you all your health and all of your uh, resolve back. Um, but if you choose to do it, you're going to be sitting, hitting the stat here and rolling dice and hopefully completing that. If you fail, something bad will happen to you. Usually you're gonna lose some health. Um, and then of course, it'll tell you in the bottom, during the street phase, how much prospecting costs. This one says three is gonna be the cost for prospecting, which is gonna give you points. One prospect for three currency, you can do choose to do that. And then of course, you look at the next thing here and it says the uh, mission selection. Well, you can have all three of these missions laid out here just like this, and you can have players choosing. They're gonna choose one of the first crew in stage one if they can. If all of those are failed, they can go to the second crew, or they can ask to join a crew with another player and put it on. Uh, and then of course, after that, you're gonna go ahead and set these down, and that will be for a later time, in which case you're gonna go on to the worker placement step, which says the streets phase. And it says take turns in order until all of your players have all completed all four actions. In your little baggie here, which you have all your different character pieces, you're gonna be using four actions in turn order going around the board to select on the board, which I'll show you below uh, later. But basically the idea is you're gonna be using it for currency, to buy cards in the black market, you can choose to take out loans, you can choose to play cards from your hand, and so on and so forth. When everybody's used up their actions, you're gonna go back to the um, worker placement aspect or the mission, and you're gonna to attempt to complete them. You can choose to do it in turn order, and of course if you're doing it together, you're gonna to be rolling together. If not, you're gonna simply be rolling throughout the entire thing, and you're going to hopefully gain some currency or gain some heat possibly, unfortunately, as well as maybe even gaining some prospects. After you finish the mission phase, you're going to go to the end phase where you update turn order. It's going to be based on the heat. The most heat is the person in the last, and the person with the least heat is the person up in front. If at some point some people are tied, you're going to go ahead and switch those two off. And then you're going to discard your hand down to six cards. So if you have three opportunity and four contacts, you have to discard one. And then, of course, you're going to go back and play again. That's the basic aspect of the game. Let's go ahead and show you how it's played below. Now we're back to Nightlands, and as you can see, I went ahead and set up the game, and uh, I'll talk about it. This is a three-player setup. There's three different players here we'll be using, which is blue and red and green. Over here, we'll talk about it first, which is the board. We're going to have all our player pawns here at zero for prospects, which is in turn victory points. The turn order, we just went ahead and decided to start with, which is blue, then red, then green. And then, of course, we have the heat, which we're all going to start at zero to begin with. And, of course, as you go up the heat meter, it's going to reduce the amount of uh, likelihood you're going to be in first. As opposed... And as well as if you get past five, you're going to actually have to start spending um, victory points for each extra heat you go past five. Uh, we've also went ahead and set up for the round cards. You're going to get a bunch of early round and late round cards. And with a four or a three or four player game, you're going to get four of the early cards and four of the late cards. You shuffle each deck, then you pick four of them randomly, then you shuffle each deck once again and put them on top of each other and put it in the remaining rounds. Then you're going to get uh, the cards here for the black market. You're going to simply shuffle all three of these decks here and then deal out the cards of Black Market. Let's go ahead and put them face down to begin with. But as you can see, a two-player game is going to be one, two, three, these guys here. A, a three-player game is here, and then a four-player game is all of the cards. And then, of course, you can go ahead and flip them over, which will tell you what cards go in what location and what you can go ahead and buy. Um, and I'll talk about that more in the phase in which we can go ahead and start beginning to buy stuff during the street phase. That's pretty much all you have to do to set the board. Pretty easy, right? Uh, once all these rounds are done with the game's going to end, you're going to score. All the decks and all the tokens I went ahead and set over here. And then as for the characters, this is the more interesting aspect as far as how setup goes. Every character is going to get their own unique two different cards. It could be a market card and it could be an opportunity card. Market's generally going to be put in your loadout. So for instance, this one here is an improved explosives. It'll go into your loadout. You're also going to start with this card in your hand as well as the amount of cards uh, that it tells you to start with one contact and three opportunities. So this is going to be your entire hand setup for this character. You're also going to go ahead and set up your ideal. It'll tell you three ideal so you put that marker right there it can go from zero to six and then of course chips it'll tell you okay you start with four chips so one two three four and then your health is at seven and your resolve is at five so you would go ahead and take one two that's four seven health 
and then you need five resolves. Three, four, and five. And each character is going to do this. They're all going to get all of the setups right here, which is basically health resolve, ideal chips, and then of course your contact and opportunities you gain. And then I, uh, the last thing right here is your little ideal marker. Over here is your abilities, and it tells you based on the missions you're gonna be participating in, which I'll show you. You're gonna have covert, streetwise, technical, melee, gunfight, and marksman, as well as your bonus special tactical expert. This one's this one's tactical, but everybody gets their own unique one. This one says whenever you fail a gunfight uh, combat challenge, reduce the uh, health penalty by one. So it's he's a little he's got a little bit of combat prowess. And of course you keep your character marker wherever you want. I just put it right there because I thought look cool. And then every character is also going to do the same based on their stats. I've also went ahead and set up missions, which we'll go ahead and talk about later. But let's go ahead and begin how the game works, uh, starting with the first player. So the first player is going to be blue, and he is going to start the game off, and we're going to skip the downtime step. It's only going to happen in the second turn and uh, all previous rounds, of uh, the second round and all previous rounds after that. So we'll go to the advanced step, and that's pretty simple. You take this card here, and you flip it over. Now it tells you, okay, this is the AR virus, and it tells you it's an early round. It'll tell you, based on the number of players, two, three, or four, how many different prof high-profile or low-profile events are going to be put on the board. This one says two and one for two, and two and one for three, and three and one for four. I went ahead and set these up already on the side there, and I'll go ahead and explain that in a second here, but we'll go ahead and continue the turn. This will tell you uh, to identify uh, affected people so that you can keep a safe distance. Now, everybody has to participate in this event. If they do not want to, however, they can take their character marker and put it on the lay low area. If they do that, they can gain full health and gain full um, of their resolve, and they can also reduce their heat marker by one if they want. And then, of course, they're going to ignore the event by not participating in it, and you cannot join a mission. So that's the cost of getting all this bonus, all these bonuses. It basically only allows you to do the street aspect of the turn. But at the beginning of the game, nobody's going to lay low. They're all going to attempt it. So it tells you a five on this one here, which I believe is the mechanical or the technical skill. So everybody's going to take one of the dies and they're going to roll. So we're going to look at the blue guy over here. His technical is three. He got a plus two, five, no problem. The next person here, her technical is three, a two, no problem. And finally, the green over here has got a three and a plus one. That's not enough. And because of that, he's going to have to take the uh, fail and this tells you minus two health panic stricken citizens lash out at you minus two health so we would simply lose two health off of his uh, character and there you go then this is going to be done yeah make sure your events over there and then of course prospecting is going to cost three for this round so at any point during the street phase if you put your character your, your uh, tokens here you can go ahead and spend money to buy prospect which is basically the victory points and you want these for the end of the game after that is going to happen, then you're going to go ahead and do mission selection, which is over here. So over here is the mission selection area in which I was already talking about. We already went ahead and set it up. Two low profile, one high. We'll go ahead and simply flip them over now so people can see them. Bam, bam, bam. These are all up for grabs, and it's based on turn order. So Blue is still going to get to go first and take his token and put it on any of these he wants. You always want to put it in the first crew section in stage one of any of the missions if you possibly can. If not, you're going to either be uh, stuck with either having to uh, work with somebody or go into the second crew position. So he's going to go ahead and look at his stats and then gauge based on these missions which one he wants to place it in. We, I already know for a fact that this guy is good at gunfighting, he's good at streetwise, and he's also good and decent at technical and melee. So this might be the one for him. He'll simply put it right there. After he's done so, then the next player, the sniper, can go ahead and choose. Like I said, she can choose to go here and work with him if he says it's okay. If not, she'll have to go in here if she wants to fight him to gain control of this area or simply one of these other two. Uh, she's good at coverts and marksmanship, so she'll probably go over here. There's a couple, there's at least a marksmanship there. And then finally, we've got the uh, veteran, and he's pretty much good at everything. He's amazing, right? But he's, um, eh, He'll go over here. So now they have all three different characters and they're all in three different locations. Like I said before, you could choose to team up or you could also choose to do the secondary crew position, but you can read the rules for that. This is a basic example. Uh, and then of course, after this is set up, then you're going to go to the street phase. So mission selection is done. We'll move over to the street phase now. Over here. So back to the main board, and as you can see, the street phase has begun, and like as always, the first player is going to begin, and these are going to be the tokens he's going to use to place on the board to gain his actions. This is the worker placement aspect of the game. Let's talk about all the different areas first of all. This is the black market. If you put your token here, 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 or here, you're able to buy stuff. Now, these two are connected, which means if you put it here, let's say Blue wanted to buy the shotgun here, he could buy it for the cost of three, 
and then he'd have to lose this one. This would actually get discarded into the discard pile. Uh, or if he chose this one, this one would get discarded. So whatever one you choose, the other one is going to get discarded, and people will not be able to select the, the other one, basically. You can choose any of these locations, and you can pick any of them, provided you can pay for it. The cost is going to be at the top right-hand corner. This one says 3KC. This is 4KC, 2 health, and of course the uh, very, very important 2 resolve. And then this one here is 1 money, 1 money, 4 money, 2 and 2, so on and so forth. So you can go ahead and choose to buy those if you want. Pretty simple, right? Then over here is the cover your tracks. You can discard a card from your hand to reduce your heat. So if you got a lot of heat, you can discard a card, place, place an action on here, discard a card, and simply go down one on the heat track. Take a rest is going to give you a health and a resolve. This is hard work. Discard a health and a resolve, and you can gain some money. Then this is the most interesting aspect of the worker placement, which is this little track here. Now, in a two-player game, you can only use these. In a three-player game, you get these two, these two, and these two. And in a four-player game, you have access to everything. These three are also always able to be accessed, but they are at a cost. So if I wanted to, let's say Blue went to go here, gather the uh, favors, you can draw a contact. You can go ahead and draw one contact for placing it there, and then it would be Red's turn. If Red also wanted to draw a contact, she could place it here, and she would get one as well. Now let's say that Green wanted to as well. Well, this is a four-player game only, so he is not able to do that. However, he could choose to place it here or here. And if he placed it there, he could draw a contact, but he's also going to raise his alarm level by one. So that is the cost for going ahead and using these little areas here. Of course, the lower the player count, the more likely you're probably going to have to be using these areas if you want to do the same thing your opponents did. And then finally down here, you've got the deal with the Euro Mafia, the Mafioso. It allows you to either borrow money from the loan shark. You can take uh, a loan and gain 10 money. You can do a max maximum of two loans, but it's going to cost you every round for each loan you have. Or you can do a long-term investment. You can buy one or two victory points for the price of the card of the round. So this, for instance, right here says three uh, KC for a victory point. So let's say it's not Blue's turn here. He wants to go ahead and buy a victory point. And he started with how much money did he start with? He started with three. So he would have three money. One, two, and three. He could spend this three money if he wanted to and gain a victory point and move his tracker up on the prospects track, which is going to give him money, uh, which is going to give him victory points, which he needs to win the game. And of course, people are just going to continue going around, placing these guys wherever they want to gain specific cards until every single person has placed all of their components, in which case this is going to be the end of the uh, round. Uh, for, for the street phase, the end of the worker placement aspect, and then we're going to go back to the missions, which we'll talk about now. Back to the missions again, and as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and set this up in turn order to make it easier for all of us. And now we're going to talk about them. The first one is going to be this one right here, which is blue. And blue is going to attempt to clear. Now he can choose this one or this one. And it tells you the story. Work. Uh, this one here says eliminate uh, the listening station. It gives you the reasoning why. And then it tells you which one, one of the two options you can choose. Of course, you could choose this one or this one, but if you fail, you have to suffer this effect, and then you're going to move on. Now, there's certain things as regards to effects. The first thing is, if there's ever a red X marker in any of the locations, that means that your mission is over and you're done. You go back, and you don't get to come back until next time. Other times, it'll just tell you you're going to suffer damage, or it will tell you you're going to suffer some kind of resolve, so on and so forth. You can, you're can you going to be suffering things. If it doesn't tell you to end, that means you're going to continue on the mission, though, until you get to the end. So to start with, this this player here, he has a decent, he's got a decent green, which is four, and this needs a five. So he's going to do this one. He's going to simply take the die here, and he's going to roll it. Now, if he wants to, in his hand, he can check to see his contacts. His contacts might be able to help him, and they'll tell you. They have a, diff a bunch of different abilities. This one here gives a plus one to covert, so if he actually wanted to do this one, it would give him a bonus. It makes him re re reduce his heat. This one here is going to give him uh, a plus two to opportunity, or draw two opportunities, or it can give somebody else a minus one to their streetwise, which won't actually help him, unfortunately. And uh, here it is, plus one to the streetwise challenge. So he's going to go ahead and spend this card, and that will allow him to simply bypass this without having to roll because he's got exactly what he needed. Going on to this next one here, he'll have the options once again. He can choose the five here or the six here. He's going to go for the five because it's only a three here, and he's going to roll. And let's see what happens. Plus one, three, four, and he needs a five. So that means he fails and has to suffer this consequence. 
So he's basically failed this challenge, and this one's interesting. It tells him that he has to fight with his sharpshooter ability, or marksman ability, and if he loses, he's going to take three damage, but then he's going to continue. So he's going to pick up the die once again, look at his marksmanship for two, see if he has any cards in hand that he wants to booster, boast, uh, boast, uh, boost. <laughs> of course, if he had this one equipped here, it would give him actually a plus one to marksmanship, which would be nice, because you could actually buy cards during the, um, during the phase as well, but he didn't choose to do that, unfortunately. So he is going to simply roll. Let's see what he does. Wah! He gets a zero. Now, now that the zero is bad because it's also a zero to, to his two, so it makes him just a two and he's not going to be able to complete this. But also, he has to spend his resolve. So, if he had five, he started with five resolve at the beginning of the game. And in this case, he's going to actually lose one resolve because that's what the die says he has to do. Uh, and then he's going to take three damage. So, he started with six health, so he's going to have three health remaining. Now, we're going to go ahead and move on one more time. So, he's going to continue because it doesn't say to end. Now, he can go ahead and choose to do his technical or, once again, his marksmanship. And I think he will go with his marksmanship. Why would he want to do that? That's a six and this is a six, but he has a higher technical value. Well, because sometimes it's going to be penalties like this, this little technical lock here. If he doesn't, if he's not able to, um, to break it, sometimes there's cards in his hand he can use to do so, uh, then he's going to have to do something else because otherwise he's not going to be able to, to even check, to even try this. So he's going to go ahead and roll. He's got a two, so he needs, I don't think he can even do it. I think he's in trouble now. All right. Ugh. So it's a three, but it's still not enough. That's a three and his two. So he's going to take three damage. And he would also have to fight this guy. But he's already down. He's already lost all of his health. So he's going to actually go back to the board over there. And he's going to go to the lay low. Which means he's going to gain all of his health and whatnot. But he's not going to be able to participate in missions next round. So that was his cost of doing that. It'll go on to the next player. And she's going to do the same thing. She's going to be able to choose these moving along. Now let's say that she completed these missions. Because you basically have an idea. You choose between the two. Go to this one. Suffer whatever penalty if you failed. If not, continue all the way through. Well, there is payment. And payment is based on this little area over here. You've got your currency you gain, you've got your uh, medals over here, your prospects you gain, and of course heat. Heat is bad though, you don't want those. Uh, this one says if he should complete it alone, that's 18 currency, two prospects and two heat, and then a crew of two and a crew of three, because you can actually work with three up to three people in these things here. And finally, uh, sometimes it's going to say a dirty mission. And if it's a dirty mission, all crew will lose an ideal. Otherwise, sometimes they won't be like this one over here. And sometimes you're actually going to be able to gain these uh, these opportunity cards. Uh, that you won one on one for all three of these here. So that is the basic idea. So she would actually go back if she completed it. She would gain the money. She would gain the prospects. She would suffer the heat penalty. And then he would go and rinse and repeat. After all of these are done, we're going to go on to the next aspect of the game, which is going to be the end phase. You're going to update the turn order based on the heat, which I'll show you, and then discard hit down to six. Let me show you how turn order works. So let's say that this was actually the heat value and the turn order at the beginning, beginning of the turn was like this, but then this is how the heat ended up. Well, in this case, whoever has the most heat is going to be last, and whoever has the uh, least heat is going to be first. Green would be in the middle here. Now, what would happen, per se, if this was like this and it started off like this? Well, in this case, when there's a tie, you're simply going to switch. If, all, uh, if this was like this as well and it began like this, then this would switch as well. So that's kind of how it works. Whoever has the least heat is going to be the one who goes first. And if it's a tie, you're simply going to switch the order with the people who we're tied with. And then, of course, like I said, you're going to have a hand of around six to eight cards. You have to discard down to six. Um, you might have less, though, if you play a lot of cards. And then you're going to simply re re regroup and do it again. Uh, some people who have to lay lower aren't going to have to do this. They're going to gain their health and their... Um, their resolve back, but they're going to have, they're going to get to reduce their heat marker down, which is nice. So if blue was up here, he would reduce, and then he can't participate in the missions this round, which means he's not going to get a lot of money. Luckily, you can still gain victory points over here, and of course, uh, during your turn, you can still also exploit connections by buying opportunity cards to your hand. And that's the basic aspect of the game Night Lancer. You're going to go back and forth until the very end of the game, which is when all of these missions have been completed. After the last one is done, you're going to look at your prospects, and then you're also going to track uh, all the extra victory points based on the cards in your tableau and a couple other interesting factors which I'll talk about above. So just before we get into the scoring and how the bonuses work, let's talk about uh, something I messed up a little bit on. First of all, shaken and lay low. Whenever you lose either of your resolve or your health, you're going to go and get shaken. You're going to lose one of your ideal, which is on this track over here. So if you started at four here uh, and you got and you lost all your health or resolve, you're going to go down one. And then, of course, you're going to be removed from the mission. You're going to be dropped. And then at the, at the beginning of the next round, you're going to get one of each of the types of currencies, one health, one resolve, and one KC. And you can choose 
choose if you want to go to lay low, and that will be the ability that will let you gain your health back and whatnot, but you won't be able to participate in missions. That's usually advisable because at the beginning, if you start the event and you roll and you lose uh, based on the diet here, if you lose one of these KC, you're instantly going to have to get uh, shaken anyway and lose an ideal, so that's nasty. But you can always choose to lay low whenever you want, even before a mission, you can choose to do that. So just, just as an, an example, just to let you know. All right, so here's how it works. Prospects are going to be based on a point structure all the way up to about 50 points, and you're going to gain them throughout the game. You're going to gain them for playing these purple opportunity cards. You're going to gain them for completing missions, and you possibly can gain them uh, from the different black market cards. I'm not too sure, but I think you can. Um, and then, of course, there is going to be the bonuses. The bonuses come from the abilities here. Whoever has the most end points of each of these types, so whoever has the most covert is going to get a point, whoever has the most streetwise, so on and so forth. Whoever has the most cards... Uh, uh, if, if you have a high ideal and a high amount of cards on your side, you're going to actually gain potential bonus points as well. You're going to gain money for all the for different cards that are, are, are cost currency above here, all your weapons and whatnot. And then you're going to be able to buy your uh, you're going to be able to buy points at the end of the game based on your KC that you have. And there's a couple other things too. I think it involves the heat and whatnot. So there's quite a few bonus points you get throughout the game. After that is all done, you're going to tally all those up and add them all up. And whoever has the most is going to be the winner. And of course, I'm pretty sure that heat, if it's a tie, also determines the winner in that aspect as well. But that is the basic aspect of the game. Night Lancer, let me go ahead and tell you what I think about it. Before we just get into it one more time here, I want to go ahead and talk about another caveat it's specifically at the end of the game if you're tied it comes down to whoever has the most currency and then i think whoever has the highest in turn order which is kind of to do with heat but just just so i got that right uh anyway though what do i think about the game night lancer well first of all the artwork's right on point it's not amazing but it's not bad either i think it's at like the third stage of artwork i think that's where i classify it you know it's good it's well done and the the board is all pushed nicely together it has this kind of weird functionality to it. you got the street phase over one side and the points over the other and then all the events and turn order. And it all just kind of works out. And I really do like that. All the different cards are unique and all the opportunities have their own bonuses of gaining different ideal, gaining different KC, and of course gaining your different prospects. And they all work in different aspects. Each character also has its own unique special ability. Like for instance here, this guy here is a police friends. Once in each downtime step, you can pay two money, then decrease your heat by one. So having some pull with the police does help the guard. That's kind of nice. And all the characters have their own unique stats, which is really cool as well. You've also got contact cards. Contact cards are basically cards that you can use almost any time throughout the game. They're going to have different specific uh, options when you can use them. This one says, uh, you can actually start a first crew, place a deal on the second crew space. What does that mean? Well, there's deal tokens here somewhere. And if you go onto the first crew space and you don't want somebody to go on that second crew space because they're going to be fighting you, which you can go ahead and check out on the Kickstarter how that works or in the rules, but basically you can stop them from doing so because they're going to clog that space up and make them go somewhere else. And there are certain missions that are super, super scary and some of them are really nice. So you go on the nice one based on your turn order because you're at the lowest heat. Awesome. Now you can also prevent them from joining you uh, unless you unless they tell unless you ask them they ask you nicely, or you can simply block them out so they can't even compete against you. Uh, and there's tons of different cards in here too. You got fixers and. Uh companies, social smarts, these all have different types of cards in here, and they function as well with these opportunity cards. Some of these will actually allow you to use these multiple times every round, which is really cool. They have this unique aspect of style that kind of puts them together, which is nice as well. You've got the black market cards, and these are basically going to be guns and backpacks and armors and all that kind of stuff. They're going to give you bonuses to your stats. They're going to make you gain um, different, you know, you can gain either health or you can gain either resolve. Sometimes Times you're going to get ideals from them uh, and they're going to also have different stats on them like loud gain a heat whenever you use this card as well as obvious well in certain missions it'll tell you whether or not you can actually use them based on the card restrictions like here this one here says card may not be used uh, which is loud so if you have any loud cards you can't actually use this use it involving this mission you can only use three cards in each mission and you can only use ones that specify which type you can use in the game but so there's all that stuff going on but it all flows and works pretty well now as a worker placement i really enjoy this game i like the different aspects uh, of how it works the turn order is very simple as you can see but there's a lot going on i think it's, it's a definitely a thicker game and certain people are not going to like this i also unfortunately do not think that serious worker placement players are are going to enjoy this game and why it's because there's a luck factor in it and there's a pretty 
pretty strong luck effector, in fact. Rolling this die is going to cost you uh, different S different things. So first, first of all, it's going to cost you resolve, and potentially it's going to cost you ideal if you ever go under resolve, right? And you're going to be rolling this to try and accomplish the missions. You might have the best laid plans, and you're going to roll this die and find out that everything did not go as according to plan. All you need to do is get a one, everything else was guaranteed, and somehow you rolled a zero, and it cost you prosperity. Uh, resolve, sorry, and it cost you resolve, and because of that you had to leave the mission, and you lost an ideal, and now you can't participate in the next mission, and that is brutal. So there is a lot of, a lot of, not a lot of luck, but there is certainly definitely luck in the game, and it can be very, very vital. You succeed certain points, and you're just not going to be able to. So it's usually in a work replacement game, it's like straight flat, uh, straightforward, no luck whatsoever. So if you like the added aspect of luck, because that is basically what this game has mechanically, it introduces the missions, and it introduces cards that kind of change the way your luck works and change based on how your stats work. So, so if you're really, really strong in certain areas and you get the right missions, you might not have to deal with that. But at the same time, you might have to, and it can be really debilitating if you don't get lucky enough. The heat aspect, though, is awesome. I love how that kind of interprets the way in which you're going to be using the game, because the events are going to dictate heat. Sometimes you're going to have to deal with the missions with heat. And then, of course, it's also going to affect turn order, and turn order is very important, especially in a in a worker placement game because that can influence where you're going to be going at the beginning. And so instead of actually just getting the take the first turn marker space, you actually have to earn it by playing the cards, specifically going the missions and making sure not to use the weapons that are very strong but cost you because they increase your heat level, which in turn can also make you lose your prospects, which can lose victory points. So that's the basic aspect of the game. Overall, I think it's a good game. I think if you enjoy a little bit of worker placement and a little bit of die rolling, along with the ability to kind of create your own luck, it's going to be an interesting game specifically because there's not a lot out there like this game. This game is very unique in what it does, and for those people, I think it's good. Me personally, it's really hard for me because when I play a worker placement, I go, I want no luck, you know? But this introduction, I was like, wow, that's really cool until I started rolling zeros and I got frustrated. But my opponents were having a great amount of time, a great amount of fun. So I had to take that into, 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 into consideration as well. And I think that it does somewhere meet in the middle. If you don't mind that aspect, you're, you're going to have a good time playing this game. Anyway, I talked a lot about it. I think you got a good idea and you should definitely decide for yourself whether you think Night Lancer would be good for you. Go ahead and check it out on Kickstarter in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the other stuff with you on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. Subscribe now. Do it! Please? I need it. I need it so bad. Also, go ahead and check out Night Lancer, currently on Kickstarter, in the description below. If you like worker placement, meets RPG, meets a little die rolling, and fixing up your own luck. It does have a special place in my heart for something that is tried. It's, it's something unique, and I haven't seen it before. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the giveaway in Geek, as well as my own site, unfilteredgamer.com. They have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to controlling all the Bitcoining and sabotaging and destructioning you later.